Ten years have passed since alien monsters landed on the American-Mexican border, and now the monsters have spread around the Middle East in an area known as the Infected Zone. The US has sent its army to fight these monsters, but the indiscriminate bombing has destroyed thousands of local homes and has led more insurgents to go against the American military. Sergeant Freighter is currently inside the Infected Zone on a mission as a sniper. From a tall roof, he watches three Arab men carefully and follows his particular subject with his rifle. When the man approaches a Muslim woman carrying a child, Freighter hesitates, but soon he recovers and quickly kills his subject with a shot. Then he quickly makes his escape, trying to go unnoticed by going through the busy market to reach his car. As he drives out of the city to return to the USA base, he watches the state of the land, where explosions and monster bodies have become part of the everyday landscape. Meanwhile in Detroit, a group of friends is spending time with their loved ones before they're sent back to the Middle East. Orphan Michael goes to pick up Frankie, the closest thing he has to a brother, only to find him getting busy with his girlfriend. Afterward the two of them plus Inkelar go to the hospital, where Sean's wife is having a baby. The four of them grew up together and their friendship got stronger when they were placed in the same military unit. Sean's wife wants him to stay a little longer, but Sean needs a distraction before leaving to fight again, so the four guys spend their last civilian day together playing basketball, sharing a smoke, and watching a dogfight. It's an extra illegal dogfight because the dog is going against a baby monster, and although at first the dog seems to be winning, the monster soon retaliates and overpowers the dog, killing it. The dog's owner is so mad that he shoots the monster in return. The boys end their day at the bar followed by a party full of substances, girls, and general debauchery. The next day, the group makes it to the Middle East on choppers, which allows them to see how devastated the land is. The monsters are enormous and travel in groups, making for quite an intimidating view. As they make their way to the desert, the monsters notice the helicopters and try to grab them, but fortunately the pilot thinks fast and flies out of the way right before the area gets bombed. Afterward, the helicopters make it to the base. The soldiers meet Freighter and Sergeant Forrest, who explains the current situation. Their primary objective isn't to eliminate the monsters, but to put a stop to the insurgent activity in the city. After a quick team exercise, the squad goes to patrol the city. The boys feel very tense when they take the streets, finding themselves surrounded by people who aren't fond of Americans. However they start to relax when kids approach them with their curiosity, asking for pictures and making it easier to connect with the locals. Next, the team reaches what they believe to be a rebel stronghold, and they watch the place all day long looking for clues on the containers that leave in trucks every few hours. When night falls, they search the building, but they don't find any weapons or explosives. They do notice three giant monsters approaching, but before they can react, they bump into a farmer that hates the American military because they said they're here to improve the situation but they actually make everything worse. It was the American bombing that killed his family and his cattle, and they keep trying to kick him out of there, but the man is determined to stay because this farm is his and the containers only have his products. He also refuses to offer any information about the rebels because he knows they'll kill him if he talks. The monster keeps getting closer, but the farmer won't stop yelling at them, so in a moment of fear Michael ends up hitting the farmer to knock him out. When one of the monsters finally reaches the farm, the squad quickly opens fire, hitting him with multiple hits of their shotguns until the monster falls dead. Then the planes take care of the other two by bombing them. Afterward the team returns to camp and Freighter yells at them for not having seen a civilian in time to stop him from getting in the way. They were lucky it was just a farmer, because he could have been a bomber. If the team isn't vigilant enough, they'll get the whole squad killed. Then the boys go to rest, and Freighter and Forrest discuss their old days, saying they weren't anything like the weak new generation. Freighter is in an awful mood and keeps drinking, so Forrest points out that Freighter has been here for too long and he needs to see his family again. This inspires Freighter to call his wife and asks her to put their daughter on the line, since hearing her is the one thing that gives him the strength to keep going. After 12 weeks of patrolling, the team gets a new mission. A fellow team is stuck in the desert infectious zone and lost all communication, so the squad has to carefully travel through an area full of mines and rebels to save them. Before they leave, they take a group picture as a memory in case not everyone comes back. During the trip, they witness a bunch of smaller monsters running around, and they are very surprised to see they won't attack. However one of the cars accidentally crushes one of the monsters, causing the guys to get distracted and drive right over mine. The explosion heavily damages one of the cars and Sean immediately gets out, wounded yet alive, but unfortunately he walks right onto another mine. To make matters worse, the insurgents take the chance to surround them and open fire. The team hides behind the car for cover and fires back while carefully making their way to their hurt comrades. Freighter checks inside the car and is devastated to find Forrest already dead, while the others drag Sean's body over to check his wounds, discovering he's lost his legs. After bandaging him the best he can, the team picks Sean up and begins running towards the nearest building while Freighter provides cover. The boys are so angry over what happened that they begin continuously firing without actually looking, and Freighter has to yell at them to remind them to use their bullets carefully and aim precisely. While the team keeps defending the building, they try to contact the base for help, but they're told HQ doesn't have access to their position. Inkelar tries his best to give Sean medicine and stop the bleeding, but sadly he's already lost too much blood and dies. 
At that moment, the smaller monsters begin arriving as well, and HQ announces through the comms that they're sending a drone to bomb the area. The team is devastated over their lost friend and wants to bring the body, but Freighter yells at them because it would be pointless wait and allowing emotions to get in the way will kill them. Reluctantly leaving Sean behind, the squad runs away right before the bomb lands. After a few hours running through the desert, the team finds an abandoned building and confirms it's empty before stopping to rest. While Freighter tries to contact the base again, suddenly two sniper shots are heard, Inkelar immediately falls dead while Frankie gets a wound on his abdomen. Soon the team is surrounded by insurgents, so for the sake of their survival, Freighter tells the team to surrender. The insurgents immediately take the squad as hostages and cover their faces to take them to their hideout, where they're tied to chairs in an old room. When the bags are removed, Michael and Freighter are devastated to discover the insurgents want them to watch Frankie slowly bleed to death. The duo tries to keep Frankie awake with encouraging words, but there's nothing they can do and Frankie apologizes for his mistake before dying. Michael has a full breakdown that causes his chair to fall, and he passes out when he hits his head. Eventually night falls and the monsters arrive at this area too. Most of the insurgents immediately run away in their vehicles, but two of them come to the room to kill the soldiers. Freighter takes advantage of the situation and immediately fights back, stomping the men's heads until they're dead. Then Freighter gets rid of the ropes on his wrists by cutting them on a broken window, takes the insurgent's weapons, and frees Michael, telling him to steal the bikes outside while he clears the building. Instead of leaving quickly though, Michael first frees Frankie to give him a proper goodbye. Hungry for revenge, he looks around the building until he finds the insurgent leader and begins beating him furiously with an iron bar until he's dead. After stealing some weapons, Michael rushes outside and finds a huge monster destroying the power lines. Noises from inside the building indicate Freighter is fighting the insurgents, and Michael is so tired and traumatized by all this death that he covers his ears in denial as the monster begins hitting the building too. A few hours later, Michael and Freighter are crossing the desert on the bikes they stole from the insurgents. There comes a point where Michael can't keep going and stops in order to fall on the sand, but Freighter immediately tells him he's in shock and reminds him they need to complete the mission, otherwise all the deaths would be in vain. Eventually the bikes run out of fuel and the duo has to keep moving on foot. When they reach a rocky area, they find an abandoned railroad car and decide to spend the night inside. They share stories about their hometown and their families, and Freighter confesses that he's been in the army for so long that when he goes home his daughter doesn't recognize him. The next day, the duo keeps going and comes across a huge dead monster, whose tentacles are still twitching. Next to it there's a school bus that was destroyed by the bomb that killed the monster, and the duo is devastated to find a bunch of dead kids inside. While Freighter tries to find water or food, Michael realizes one of the kids is still alive and takes him out to try to help him. Freighter points out the kid is in pain and he won't survive the trip, so he tries to give him a merciful killing by covering his mouth and nose. However the kid clings to Michael's hand, and Michael feels bad enough to make Freighter stop. At that moment, a group of locals approaches the area on horses. Freighter immediately takes his weapon out, but Michael hands the kid to a woman and surrenders. Grateful for having helped one of their people, the locals take the soldiers to their camp. After washing up in an oasis and watching the kid be given proper care, Freighter and Michael join the locals to share their food, their songs, and even a smoke. There are some monsters walking in the distance, but nobody bothers them. When night falls, Michael notices the woman leaving camp with a bunch of lanterns, and he decides to follow them. It turns out the lanterns are left around the bus as a way to offer a funeral for the kids, who are being taken from the bus and given a proper burial. When a monster comes closer, the woman sits to watch her, and a curious Michael follows her example to be surprised by the result. The monster is there to grieve for his fallen brother by spreading luminescent spores all over the ground, causing beautiful beams of light to brighten up the area. Eventually Michael falls asleep on the ground next to the woman, and in the morning they leave without saying a word. Meanwhile Freighter watches the kid they rescued and begins to lose his mind when he notices the kid is dying too, meaning their effort had been in vain. When Michael returns to camp, Freighter hits him for getting chummy with a girl while they should be concentrating on the mission. Then he drags him to see the boy's body as he reminds him they don't get to play hero or feel anything in war. Afterward the soldiers leave the camp to continue their mission. On their way out, they find a kid with a can in his hands, and the child opens it to reveal a tiny monster. Michael takes the can and releases the monster, letting it bury itself in the sand because it's just a baby. A few hours later, the duo makes them to the location of their mission, only to find a town that has been bombed. They take the streets and find them empty, but when Michael takes a turn behind a building, he finds a bunch of kids playing around with firearms. Freighter demands to know where they find those weapons, and the kids take him to a building where it's revealed that the team they were supposed to save is already dead. Realizing he lost his team for nothing, Freighter finally loses it and begins threatening the locals, demanding to know who killed the soldiers. He's talking like a madman and doesn't care about the fact these are civilians or that the kids are watching. When he shoots a man, Michael is forced to point his gun at his superior officer, but Freighter won't calm down. He wonders why he's here at all and turns toward the civilians again, so Michael has no choice but to shoot. Freighter falls to his knees grabbing his head, unable to deal with the magnitude of the tragedy. 
Then he decides to go outside as the bullet wound slowly bleeds out, this way he can die while watching a group of monsters in the distance struggling against the incoming bombs. One of the choppers rescues Michael, but he can only scream at the result of this mission. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.